richly bless you and guide you again on this second part of today's series of how to receive the Holy Ghost on, on series part three. We were leaving off before of the baptism of the Holy Ghost as, as we are beginning to see here. Amen. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and, be, and being baptized and receiving the Holy Ghost. It means the same thing in the brand new Testament. Amen. It means the same thing in the brand new Testament. In the apostles day when Peter believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they did get baptized and they did immediately receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Peter summed it up in Acts chapter 11, verses 14 to 17, with these words, Who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them as on us at the beginning, then remembered I, the word of the Lord, how that he, said John indeed baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost for as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ each time in the brand new testament where reference in, is made to believing on the Lord folks it also indicates the receiving of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost, and baptism in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? This statement proved true again in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. Okay? Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. I pray you're marking it, highlighting it, and writing it down. The question that Paul to them was, did ye receive the Holy Ghost when ye believed? Okay? Did ye receive the Holy Ghost when ye believed? He could have asked them a question that's a very common among us. He could have asked them, Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? While this would have been perfectly scriptural, it would have given the disciples room to make a personal human judgment on their behalf on their faith salvation is too momentous a thing to be left to human judgment it's a much safer indeed instead as Paul did here to ask rather for divine verification of their faith he didn't even he did not so much Asked them about their faith as he did about the results of their faith. Notice here. Did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? He's very well knew that if they had not received the Holy Spirit, they had not believed. Had not Jesus said plainly 30 years before this? That he that believe on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his innermost being folks shall flow the rivers of, of living water but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive in john chapter 7 37 to 39 jesus had taught his disciples concerning faith in matthew chapter 11 24 what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. The receiving was the proof of the petitioner's faith. Certainly, if they had received the things that, that, that they asked for, they had believed. Amen? The father who had a deaf mute son in Mark chapter 9, 22 to 23, he pleaded, If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou cast, if thou cannot believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Receiving and believing are always linked together, folks. 
receiving is always the proof of the petitioner's faith. A few hours before the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, he urged his disciples, Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. That's John chapter 16, verse 24. In today's theology, your believing, also called faith, needs to show a result, folks. Okay? Your faith, okay? In today's theology, I'm going to say this one more time. In today's theology, your believing is also called faith. Needs to show a result in order to know you have believed that God for a miracle. Do you understand me? That you have believed God for a miracle. Many will say, have faith and pay your tithes and God will do a miracle. Okay, of providence. But you first have to pay your tithes. Many will say, have faith and pray for a miracle of healing. And that sign of your healing is the release from that sickness and is dependent upon your believing. But isn't it strange, folks, that according to today's theology, that in all things visible, tangible, positive proof can be shown as a result of believing, except in the realm of salvation? This is my point here today. I've seen groups who proudly display Acts chapter 4 verse 12 in their churches. But when you go to them and you ask them to baptize you in the name of Jesus, they refuse. They'll tell you. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is a quiet thing experienced by faith and that there's no positive proof or tangible evidence. No, I'm not going against any fellowship. I love everyone that has breath. Amen. I love everybody that has breath. I'm not going against anyone's word. But I am instructing you in the right way that you should go, folks. Amen? Because they will tell you that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a quiet thing in today's, in today's, in today's level of today's world. Okay? It's a quiet thing experienced by the faith and that there's no positive proof or tangible evidence. <laughs> Isn't that strange? That we can point to a healing, to a job, to a restored home, or to any number of things that can be seen and verified to be a result of our faith in God. But in this awful question here of a soul salvation, modern theology tells us we are left without a witness at all. We are left without a witness at all. How can it be that, that we are required to exercise a degree of faith strong enough to secure our salvation and yet never have any visible, audible, or tangible proof that our faith has been effective? I'm here to tell you that the New Testament salvation is not <laughs> predicted upon such doubtful grounds. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you such doubtful <laughs> Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed, folks? Ask Paul. Ask Paul. These signs shall follow them that believes. Amen. Said Jesus Christ. Whether you have believed or not believed, it's nothing more than a matter of your personal opinion. Unless your faith has been rewarded. 
Amen. Whew. Through the Holy Spirit. Whether you have believed it or not, folks, it's nothing more a matter of your personal opinion. And I'm telling you that again. Because it hurts my soul so much to see this happening today. And unless your faith has been rewarded by the signs which Jesus said would follow the believer. Where eternity, heaven, and hell are involved. We dare not trust our opinions. If the signs have not followed it. We have not believed according to the scriptures. Notice that Paul in Acts chapter 19, after asserting that the Ephesians had not received the Holy Ghost, immediately taught them that they should believe on him which should come after. That is on Jesus Christ. You can see that the results of the faith which had been sown by hearing the word of God. They were baptized in Jesus' name and they received the Holy Ghost, folks. And they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as Paul had taught them. They were baptized as an act of faith. And signs followed the believers as <laughs> as Jesus had said that they would in Mark chapter 16. Through the Lord's grace, I've been telling you throughout this whole series, I pray that you're writing down all of the scriptures. I pray that you're memoing, writing memos. I pray that you're highlighting because I pray throughout this series, you're going to have your highlighters and your pens prepared and moving because this is very imperative for your walk with Christ. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. Jesus had said that they would in Mark chapter 16. For the grace of God. They received the Holy Ghost. And they spoke in other tongues. In the New Testament. And this. <laughs> for the grace of God. And this is what is meant by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts. People received the baptism of the Holy Spirit suddenly, quickly, and easily. In not one instance besides the day of Pentecost do we have record that those who were filled, they came by their own experience as the results of long periods of tarrying and seeking Him for the promise of the Father. Amen? The baptism, folks, of the Holy Spirit is represented to us as a gift. A gift from the Lord our God. And since it's a gift from our Savior, it would seem that it's to be merely received by faith. By faith. Usually a person receives a gift with gratitude and thanksgiving. Amen? Amen without a strain or without a struggle. You don't have to beg God to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to beg him for it. You don't have to tarry to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a simple matter of faith. Amen. It's a simple matter of faith in the word of God, folks. For the grace of God, please understand this. Understand your very own pastora, Dr. Diana Bravon, today. Amen. You need to understand this very word. You're not seeking God for the gift of tongues. You don't go after him and seek him for it. He supplies this gift to you. This is a gift from the Lord to you. Okay, you're not seek. You are seeking God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you need to understand this. You are not seeking God 
for the gift of the tongues. You are seeking God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of his spirit. The river of water springing right out of your soul, man. Program out of your soul. And when God starts to pour out his spirit upon you. For the grace of God. Huh, when God starts to pour out his spirit upon you. It will be evidenced by speaking with other tongues. But you're not seeking to speak in tongues. You're seeking to be baptized in his spirit. The simple faith in the promises of God. And God said, I could have it. I've been repented. I've been baptized. I can have it, folks. And it's all it takes. Is all it takes? Huh? That's all it takes. Through the Lord's grace, over the course of the next few Sundays, I want to continue to build up your faith, folks. I'm not here to destroy your faith. I'm not here to belittle you or to belittle anyone. Amen. My goal here and my objective here for you today is to build your faith. So despite of what your flesh says to you or what you have been told in your past, you can also receive the promises of the Father. We will talk about it. Why some don't even receive the Holy Ghost quickly. <laughs> and making contact with the Spirit. The method of transition from the flesh to the Holy Spirit. The act of transition from the flesh to the Spirit. I promise you that if your desire is to fully believe and to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit... You do not want to miss next the next few Sundays that I'm about to share with you. You don't want to miss the next a few Sundays that I'm about to share with you. It's time to believe the Lord our God, folks, and for you to receive yourself to receive the promises of the Father. It is time, folks. Jesus is coming soon and we don't have that much time left. So I guarantee you this next few weeks. For the grace of God for you to receive this word. Amen. And I promise you that if your desire is to fully believe and to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For the grace of God, you don't. And I'm going to keep repeating it. You don't want to miss the next few Sundays. Amen. It's time to believe, folks. It's time to believe the Lord our God and for yourself to receive the promise of the Father. We are a life-changing ministry, a going ministry, and a growing ministry, a praying ministry. This is a growing ministry, a ministry that brings you the results. Amen. For anybody who would like to contact this ministry, um, for the grace of God, or you would like uh, the booklets of the daily ponderings or, or the good morning messages, or you missed out on a few weeks of your, of, uh, how do you call it? If you missed out on a few weeks of Bible studies, or you would like to get involved with a free series of, of, how do you call it? Of the certified Bible studies, which I'm really excited about it because we're really deep into the book of Matthew. Amen. We are really deep into the book of Matthew right now. And for the grace of God, we're on, I think, the third part this week of uh, of the book of Matthew of 13. And there's a lot to cover, a lot to cover, a lot to cover for you to eat upon. Your spiritual fruits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I look forward to receiving your, your sign-up sheets every week from the from the month of January to the month of December and I also look forward to giving you your GPA grades and your grading amen and your certification amen and send it out to you 
thou good and faithful servant of our Lord, who is following the word of God, who is following the Lord's instruction, who wants the Lord within your heart to move you, not your flesh to move you. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Um, my name again is Senior Pastora Dr. Guillermo Brevon. We are here to help and encourage you. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you <laughs> and yours and everyone. And may the Lord richly bless all of your babies with paws. May there be a hedge of protection wrapped around you as you go to and fro within whatever states that you live in. Um, folks, as you well know, uh, the recent prayer request that's been sent out that I've been praying over our nation, this nation right now, we need to raise our hands. We need to touch the hem of the Lord's garment over our nation right now, especially with the circus that's going on right now within, um, I call it a circus. I know my mom would be so disappointed if she was here today to, he to see what's really going on in the world with, uh, with these elections. Amen. She taught me always about praying for the right leadership to come in. That's the way how I was spiritually raised by my mom. She always voted whether it was the bad Fulano, bad Fulano, or the right one, or the crooked one, or the negative one. She brought me up in the right way that we should go. Amen. For the leadership to come to pass who will be directing our lives and who will be um, the next leader behind the podium of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Um, please contact us for prayer as you well know. Amen. And for every brand new uh, visitor as we welcome today all of the national, all the na international, everybody that has breath. When we first started this ministry, it was only for the shut-ins, for all of the disables, as I became the inside photo. But today we have everyone that has breath that comes and visits us daily. Amen. Everyone is welcome. There's not one soul that's unwelcome. So I praise God for each and every one of you. Please come and visit all of our websites. Our uh, Come daily. Receive your daily devotions, your good morning scripture devotion, your pondering, um, Deacon Matthew's moments on Friday nights. Amen. Moments with Deacon Matthew on Friday nights. Amen. Uh, don't forget this next few weeks, okay, of how to receive the Holy Spirit because you're going to be missing out on a lot if you do. I just pray that you come back and you receive this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Please contact us for prayer. We are available for prayer 24 hours a day through the Lord's grace. So please send in your prayers. Contact us uh, for prayer. Your very own Pastora Diana Brevan, I roll before that altar every single day. I raise my hands and I touch the hem of the Lord's garment over you, your family, your loved ones, your state, your babies of pause, everyone that is within your heart is fully continually in prayer and anointed amen so please send in your prayer requests i look forward to hearing from you soon may the lord richly bless you we have a lot going on um recently for the grace of god one of our prayer warriors also she prays for she has a certain prayer for you in the morning so come on out and visit us amen for the grace of God to any of our websites, you will receive her special prayer that she also posts in the morning. God bless you all where Jesus is Lord. Dr. Deanna Brevon.